Today we're going to be playing a deck that I like to call Abzan Counters. Now, we named this deck Abzan Counters because we built this deck around two specific creatures. We're talking, of course, about Grokma and Ochre Jelly. Both of these cards enter the battlefield with a set amount of 1-1 counters placed onto them. And when they die, they create copies of themselves in different types of ways. But ultimately, it makes them very resilient and very hard for the opponent to get rid of. Uh, which makes us that much more powerful. Uh, the deck has some really fun ways to promote those 1-1 counters, so things like fight rigging as well as uh, reef ooze, both things that uh, help our creature scale up over time and become a little bit more annoying per se. <laughs> um, we've also got the Vorinclex on the top end, which is a great way to end the game. You know, double our counters up. Uh, you know, it has haste, which can smash our opponent's face immediately and try to close out a game. Uh, but the deck is a lot of fun, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's gameplay footage, which we're about to show. But if you guys want a full deck breakdown, of course, stick around to the end of the video for that. And uh, in the meantime, there's a link in the description for the deck list down below. And uh, if you guys enjoy content just like this, if you wouldn't mind hitting that like button as well as the subscribe button, both of those go a very long way and I'd greatly appreciate it. But with that being said, guys, enjoy the games today and we'll see you at the end. Peace. Be sure to check out the new Swayze shop that just went live. Get yourself a really cool community inspired t-shirt all while helping support the channel. Links to the shop will be down below in the description. And with that being said, enjoy the games. Peace. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel and uh, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be playing an Abzan 1-1 count counters type of a deck where we're going to be putting 1-1 counters on all of our creatures and uh, scaling them upwards. But in the meantime, they have some additional value as well. When they die, they can kind of reanimate themselves. We got things like Grokma and the Jelly, which will keep coming back over time. And uh, we kick things off with the Star Pupil, which can, uh, you know, throw its 1-1 counters onto other creatures, which is also really nice. Uh, we've been playing a lot of Abzan lately, and I'm aware, but uh, Abzan has just a lot going on right now for me personally. And uh, I think there's a lot of really cool things we can do. I wanted to build a Grokma deck, wanted to keep it... Uh, Wanted to keep it in the uh, Golgari uh, department, but unfortunately, uh, most of the 1-1 one -one counter stuff comes from white, so had to throw in some white uh, to make this work out pretty well for us. Sorry, I was just uh, thinking right there, so I kind of had a brain fart as far as talking to you guys. Uh, today should be a really good day, though, man. It really should. This deck seems like a lot of fun. I've tried it out a couple of times already. Feels pretty good. You can have that, believe it or not, because I do need this black source. Um, yeah, we're going to go Grok Ma, and I'm going to go ahead and just attack in here with both of these 1-1s one to keep the pressure on them. Because now we have something we can place the 1-1 one -one counters onto, plus Grok Ma gets an additional 1-1 one -one counter when anything dies. So uh, Grok Ma going up to a 5 now. And if it does die from, let's say, Blood on the Snow or Meat Hook Massacre, it's going to create another 5-5 five -five body. So already we're looking really, really good. That's fine. We get the 5-5 five, five body. Totally fine. And let's see what sort of nonsense we can get here. Um, that probably has the most value for us uh, as far as upside goes. And let's get in there with our 7 damage. Already taking him down to 9. Very, very aggressive here. And we did add Doomscar to the list, might, which might seem a little strange, but uh, we've been uh, we've been experimenting with this deck a little bit, and Doomscar seems to make a lot of sense because the decks we keep losing to are uh, decks that uh, are decks that get a little bit aggressive, and uh, we 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 struggle with that. So, all right, let's put the one one counters here. Bring in the Luminarch. And we we don't attack. I know that may seem silly to not attack there, but they're just going to gain three life. We're going to lose our 7-7. Seven, seven. So let's just wait until the next turn here. Oh, wow. There goes our Grokma. That's actually pretty clutch discard there. We really needed that Grokma to be successful, I think. Um, they're not going to attack into us, though. So that's, that's kind of good news for us. And we're going to get another fight rigging, which is cool okay or they are going to attack into us very strange i think there's a lot more upside for us there on them attacking us so we'll take it we will take it
I'm just gonna spread the damage out the best we can here. Spread the damage the best we can here, and then, uh... Ooh, a jelly seems fun, but... I'm gonna take the Grok Maw, because the jelly is gonna get complicated with the mana. Uh, we wanna make sure we have enough mana when we get that down, so... Instead, we're gonna do it like this and attack in. And then everything is gonna get extra 1-1 one -one counters when we attack in next turn because of the ooze. Uh, we're doing our thing, man. We're doing our thing. This did put a wrench in our plans here, though, with the uh, the death touch and the fact that they killed our original Grok Maw, but things will be fine after this next turn as long as we don't get hit with any sort of sweeper here, but the Meat Hook Massacre is only going to be for two if they have it, so looking pretty good. Alright, here we go. Moment of truth. Let's put that here. Let's put that here. That here. Rockma comes in. Everybody attacks the face. Everyone scales up one more time thanks to the ooze. And that is game. Let's go. They were going to gain five life off of that. So they would have been at 11 total. And they would have only taken 10. I mean, they could have survived that turn. But uh, yeah, it was looking pretty bleak for them. Three fight riggings on the field. That was a pretty good game for us. GG. All right. Solid first game. Um... Yeah, I, I, I enjoyed that. I wish they wouldn't have killed the Grok Moss so quickly. I feel like we could have got a lot more uh, value out of it early on and probably killed them a lot faster, but it is what it is. Um, opening it up with a Doom Scar seems okay, believe it or not. Um, again, we I wanted to discuss that actual uh, Doom Scar in our deck. We've been running into a lot of like Boros aggro with this deck and uh, Mono Green, which is kind of strange. But uh, those two decks were doing a pretty good job against us uh beating us to the punch because they would go extremely fast extremely wide and uh we were doing our thing and we were getting bigger creatures but they were getting around us uh and killing us pretty early so uh i had to add the doom scar into the deck i think to uh mitigate a little bit of that um i'm gonna drop the ooze i think the ooze is the most value uh because if we Drop the ooze, get through its summoning sickness next turn. When the ooze attacks, it becomes a 4-4, four, four, so that'll help a lot. Let's see what they want to do with this. I would imagine they're going to block and then uh, deadly dispute their own eye twitch here. Yep. No surprises there. Let's see what they grab, though. Sciences. Okay. Environmental Sciences. I'm going to go with Grokma. Grokma, obviously, having 1-1 one, one counters coming in is super helpful because it's going to scale upwards when it attacks with the ooze. And uh, if they do find a sweeper of some sort, like a Meat Hook Massacre here, uh, Grokma will regenerate itself, which is nice. Uh, we might not invest any more into the board, to be honest. I am a little bit scared of uh, exiling effects now that they've shown us white mana. I didn't expect that. Uh, there's a good chance... <sighs> Good chance that we get hit with the Wandering Emperor here, but we still got to play like we don't see that white mana because we have to be aggressive. We'll see. Attack in with everybody. It's nine damage coming through. Obviously, they chump block with the 1-1. One, one. Mono Black has a great way to just kind of chump block all day with their things. Wow, they leave it. They leave it. Uh, well, we don't have anything other than the inscription to play at instant speed. So I'm going to go ahead and play out the pupil just because we can. End our turn. That way we can hold this in case some shenanigans happen where we want to add 1-1 counters or gain some life. Uh, probably no, no world where we want to fight. That's annoying. That is annoying. Maybe I think we fight here. They're probably going to be enticed here to make a negative 1-1 one, one happen on our pupil, which if that happens, uh, Grokma grows. Not bad. And then we attack in here. To kill Kaya, probably. 
man i'm so afraid of exiling effects like that's the thing this deck that we're up against right now is probably the best matchup against us because it runs exiling effects right and it's really 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 frustrating to deal with but uh i'm hoping we'll be okay but i mean wandering emperor is just an absolute house of a card here it could just come in right now and take rachma out of our game I was hoping this was more like of a meat hook massacre mono black deck, but the white comes down and it really immediately just kind of shakes, shakes me to the core here. Uh, I don't think we can, uh, I don't think we can play the Luminarch again. We just, uh, we're trying to avoid any sort of tragic ending to our game here. Um, end our turn. We can actually inscription for the full cost. Now with the five mana, we can kick it. Uh, kind of a very awkward game. Again, just try, just trying to tiptoe around, tiptoe around this exiling as long as we can here. That's game. That is game. I can't believe we actually pulled that off. That was actually really scary. The matchup there was just not in our favor, but somehow we pulled it out. Kaya, Kaya went for the wrong exiling, I think. They should have they should have targeted Grok Mob, but then again, the Ooze did kind of scale up the whole team the whole time, so maybe not. I don't know. I don't think they really made any mistakes. I just don't think they had what they needed, which was those exiling effects. Um, the nice thing is we avoid Vanishing Verse, right? Which we knew we were going to avoid. It was that Wandering Emperor that was lingering in my brain, but GG, man. Yeah, I can't lie. I'm having some fun with this one today, guys. This one's this one's pretty cool. I, I love me some Grok Mob. Grok Mob is a really fun card. By the way, uh, yeah, I got the uh, the Goku Ultra Instinct shirt on today. I got this on for my son today because uh, my son, he's six years old and I'm trying to introduce him to Dragon Ball Z. And uh, I thought uh, he'd be a little bored with it, to be honest, because I thought, it, you know, the, the, the old graphics and and uh, I just don't I don't think with the new technology, the kids have the attention span for those types of old cartoons these days. I've tried things like Scooby-Doo and whatever, and he just not into it. So, um I decided to just drop him right in the Dragon Ball Super. I knew he would love that. And then uh, he absolutely is hooked now. And that's all he cares about is Dragon Ball Super and Goku and all that stuff. So I put this shirt on today to, to show him again. Because I wear it sometimes, but he really never really notices. But I was like, look who's on my shirt. And he's like, what? He's like, I want to get a Goku shirt. <laughs> that's pretty funny. But yeah, he's so hooked into it now. We, we've only been watching for like two or three days and... We're already like uh like 11 or 12 episodes in he just does not want to stop watching it it's so funny kids are awesome sometimes all right that is annoying i hope we get a doom scar at some point in this game this is why doom scar was put into the deck was for these types of situations uh but it looks like we're gonna have to try to fight this straight up creature for creature here hopefully we can make it work we do have grok Ma after all in this next play um, and it will be able to block comfortably and create another creature. But if they drop down uh, the Kamano, that thing is going to make things exile, which makes it our jobs a lot harder. Okay, that's tough too, because now they give that to the Bloodthirsty Adversary and they can freely swing in with no threats to their, uh, their creatures. So no blocks. That's actually pretty interesting. That's going to get us back into the game. Um, in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and play this down, though. And we are going to give Grok Maw the old 1-1 one, one counter here, because uh, if it dies, we can create a 4-4 four, four off of its body. Uh, but yeah, this is going to get us back into the game with this life gain mechanic. I'm hoping we can get there. If we had, if we had gone first this game, we definitely would be ahead of them right now. But going second makes things very, very tricky uh, against a deck this aggressive. If they have a Raiju here, it's probably curtains for us, but we're going to... We're gonna see. Looks like they're trying to maybe blow up Grokma here, but if they do, I don't really mind too much. Another adversary. Okay, that's fine. They can't kick it, and there's nothing to even bring back, so I'm okay with that. They are going to go ahead and send it here, huh? Very weird attack from our opponent here. Nonetheless, we make these blocks here. Looks like no burn mechanics from our opponent either, which is strange that they would uh, sacrifice up their Luminarch like that. No, they do have burn mechanics. Uh, I guess it must be a, a Royal Eruption because it's sorcery speed. Mm 
very tricky very tricky uh oh wow they go face they're gonna regret that i think i think they're gonna regret that because we have the inscription and we have double luminarchs here this is great this is great we're gonna gain all this life it's gonna be nice uh next here here the more life gain the better so we'll go ahead and do it like that Hopefully we don't have to use the inscription here. It's just there, uh, you know, safely if we need it in case of a burn spell over the top. Uh, but yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about this. I'm hoping that we can just kick this thing later, but we'll see. We shall see. I think we got him. I mean, we get down to one HP, but dude, the one HP gang is in full effect today. Let's go. Oh, just let me get to my next. Let me get to my next play here. That's all I'm asking for. Just don't. Don't send it here. Ah, oh, you're gonna send it. You're gonna send it, huh? Well, let's see. I don't necessarily have to do it though. Yeah, I don't have to do it. But I am gonna lose both of my Luminarchs. Which I suppose is fine. Here we go. Oh, and we get a Doom Scar. Where were you a minute ago? That would have been really nice to have that. We're gonna we're gonna surprise them with this. We're gonna surprise them. We're gonna see what they want to play here. That's yeah. We're gonna have to do it now. <laughs> so much for surprise. I could have got two more damage, and I'm well aware. Uh, but uh, I was hoping maybe they play something a little bit bigger that we could take care of. But the Kamano is not anything bigger. It's just trying to deal one damage to our face and win the game. So. We'll do it like that. Luminark. All right, no worries. We have an 8-8, eight, eight, so not too scared of that. And Fight Regan comes down immediately, gaining us uh, immediate value. Oh, yes, please. Yes, please. Uh, I'm going to take the damage. I might regret this, but uh, maybe not, though. Maybe not, though. I get double the counters if I get the Vorinclex in first. So they are going to have to make a block here because we are going to kill them. So that clears up the board, which is great news for us. And then we also get down a blocker for anything hasty in return. And it gets double the 1-1 counters. So love that. Can block a Cavalier very comfortably. Um... And they're on level two. Oh, wait. They don't even actually get to go to level two with the Kazan. Because <laughs> of the board clicks. Let's go. GG's. Let's go. Let's freaking go. Let's freaking go. That was a pretty good game right there. Uh, we got down to one HP. Inscription absolutely saved our hides there, man. Uh, a simple Doom Scar in the opening hand would have, you know, solved a lot of our issues there, though. But uh, ultimately, pretty good game. Uh, this is a great hand if I had any planes. <laughs> Sometimes it'd be like that. I hope this isn't a loss because we're going to have to mulligan here. Typically when I mulligan, I always feel like it's almost a guaranteed loss, especially when you're already going second. It's like a double, a double negative. Come on, I need something good here. Need something good here. We're going to hit the mulligan, so we're, we're hoping for the best here. Uh, you never want to put your, 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 you know, fate in arena's hands but sometimes you got to do it and just pray for the best man well they're they're either having a hard time considering what they want to keep as well or they're just afk at the moment but thank you guys so much for watching today's video i do appreciate you hanging out with me today hopefully we don't take an l here but um yeah this deck's been a lot of fun i hope you guys enjoy it a lot uh i wouldn't say that this is like super meta cra crushing or, or very powerful so uh be wary about the uh the crafting on this but I hope you guys enjoyed enough for the entertainment factor. Uh, let's go to Mulligan and... Okay, this is doable. We can keep this. We can keep this. Little Luminarch on the turn two onto the Pupil. And then we can fight Rigging as well. And uh, hopefully the Pupil gets massive this game. That'd be sweet. That would be pretty sweet. But opponent's taking forever. That was a much better white source there, so we can use this for black later, so that's good. That is good. Opponent ended up keeping their whole hand, too. They didn't even take a mulligan here, so... They're just taking a long time. Wow, dude! 
<laughs> if you guys haven't noticed, I have a new soundboard system. It's not new. I've had it, but uh, I'm finally utilizing it, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. Been having a lot of fun with it. Uh, yeah, I forgot. I was just gonna just put on this. All right, we're gonna attack. We're gonna stay aggressive. We're we're willing to make a trade here with the harmony. We'll get the one one counters put right back over to the luminarch. So happy to make the trade. Uh, they, it looks like they might be going for some sort of exiling effect here. And if they do... No, they aren't. But they get to copy the effects of that, which is super annoying. Alright, get two cards off of that. But they do end their turn, allowing us to take advantage. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to go fight rigging over the ooze. Even though the ooze seems like a really fun play. Wandering Emperor, because uh, I don't know if necessarily the Doom Scar is going to be something we want to focus in on. Uh, no attacks. I think we just sit back. We wait a little bit here. Four, five, six. At the beginning of combat. At the beginning of combat. Okay, so we should be able to trigger this on seven, even with the Luminarch's trigger. Uh, the game should automatically stack the triggers correctly here for us, uh, but they take the fight rigging. That's tough. And they get to copy it. Uh, yeah, we're in trouble here. This this uh, Weaver of Harmony is going to probably just destroy our whole squad here. And the fact that they're using exiling effects doesn't allow us to get any sort of value off of the 1-1 counters when things die. So, uh, going to be tough, man. Going to be tough to recover from this. I don't think we have a, a very good shot at winning this game, to be honest. Not really. And I'm going to put it on the, the ooze here because they're jelly because uh, it can become a 2-2 two -two when it dies. So it's all good. But we, we knew this was going to be a tough game to win. Anytime going second, it's already hard enough as it is. But then you also add on the mulligan factor. And uh, the opponent has the weaver, which has just been fantastic for them. I do like the weaver a lot in that deck. Um, I hate that deck. The deck is really annoying, but... Um, I do like the Weaver a lot. It's a cool card. Very cool card. All right, we're going to go creature for creature here and just hope for the best. But uh, I don't know if it's going to pan out for us or not. All right, everything's got 1-1 one, one counters now, though. So if we do attack in next turn, everything scales upwards as far as 1-1 one, one counters goes, uh, thanks to the ooze. So you never know. We might be able to beat them down here. But I've got a feeling that they're going to just play another like borrowed time or confinement circle type of effect. Because you're running the Weaver, you're almost always running those types of effects. And uh, from there, we are going to probably take an L. Uh, Doomscar would have been actually pretty relevant, but we wouldn't have been able to get it off of the fight rigging anyways because it got taken away, so. A Doomscar here would be pretty interesting, though, because we would get the uh, the Jelly back, and then everything else on their side would die. They would get their Kami back to their hand, though, which is pretty unfortunate for us. That's a fun find. Okay, so we have the, the mana to actually cast it as well. So I, I say we go for it. I say we go for an attack here, and then we look to... Uh... I don't know. Maybe. Four, five, four, two. Yeah, I mean... Seems pretty interesting. I mean, we're going to lose anyways, right? Let's just send it, see how they block. You never know. These blocks might be pretty interesting for us to use an inscription on. Um, we'll see. We don't care if the jelly dies because we're going to get a 2-2 back from that. So that's fine. Um, that's it. That's the only way they're blocking here. Okay, so... We are going to then do the inscription here. Hmm. How do we, how do we best serve up some cold punishment here? Um, I want these weavers dead so bad. Ah, three, four. I 
I don't know. I, I really don't know if this is the right uh, move here, but I'm going to do it anyways. Um, because I want these weavers dead very bad. And they're left with just two creatures left on the battlefield, which is really good for us. Um, so we should be okay. Should be okay. Uh, a little scary still. I mean, the weaver is still there. At least one of them is. So a little scary. All right. Uh, wish me luck, man, because this is going to come down to their last three cards. Obviously, we have uh, a very healthy board state here with the, the ooze being on the battlefield. Um, problem is, is that any sort of removal spells our opponent runs is going to come from uh, exiling effects, which completely negates what we try to do with our, our reanimation stuff with the pupil and the ooze and all that. So they're going to draw two cards. Fun stuff. That's why I wanted to kill the Weaver, because they would have uh, drawn three cards there, which very, very problematic for us. Um, I mean, we do have a pretty wide board here, and they've only got three creatures, and we're going in for potentially lethal here. I just hope they don't have some... Yeah, okay, Jukai Naturalist. Well, I mean, at least they're going to have to block with the Jukai Naturalist, which is kind of nice. It'll force their hand here a little bit. Ah, of course. Of course. Oh, that's tough. That is going to be a very tough thing to get through for us. 7-7 seven, seven with lifelink. Brutal. Are they going to attack? If they attack into me, that's actually not terrible for us. It would serve them much better purpose to block with that than attack with it. So if they want to attack in, by all means, please do. And then you never know. We just, we top deck a wandering emperor. That'd be pretty bonkers. All right. This is good. It's actually really good. Oh, come on. I can do better than that. Um, Grokma. So we go one and then two, five, six. So yeah, that wouldn't work out. Um, we'll go here and here. And we swing with all and we try to close i mean there's no closing here with all this lifelink but we do kill uh the spirited companion and the jukai naturalist uh we are going to lose the ooze to the kami again this is uh, unfortunate for us because we have to try we have to try to close it's just not going to happen and uh we gave it our best shot uh, i may just concede here we'll see we'll see it would have been super heartbreaking, though, had we have drawn a uh, a really, really good card under here. Maybe like a Doomscar or even like a Wandering Emperor or even a Vorinclex. That would have been a little heartbreaking for us because uh, we wouldn't have been able to get it. <laughs> and it really would have bummed me out. All right, we got another Jelly down on the field. We got a five and a four, and they're stuck to not attacking in again. But again, the Weaver just sitting out there producing nonstop value for our opponent. <sighs> Super unfortunate. Depending on these next three cards that get played, I may just concede to get onto the next game to try to get you guys as many games as possible here. Um, we'll see. Yeah, I'm going to concede here because that now gives them lifelink and they're also going to draw two cards because the Weaver's going to tap here and they just draw two more cards. So 8-8, eight, eight, gaining 8 life. I don't know, man. Do I concede or do I just hope for like a Wandering Emperor and they attack in? I don't know. I don't know. I guess, we, I guess we'll see if they attack. If they attack, it opens the door potentially. Now that's Death Touch. I mean, this is really brutal. This is really brutal because if they attack in and gain line nine here, that's a lot better than the last turn. Uh, and they don't attack. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're in trouble. We play this down. Um, it doesn't really do us any favors at the moment because uh, we're just... We're not getting the value from attacking in with it, unfortunately. Um, yeah, we can't even attack in. 
that is gonna be game guys unfortunately just because of all the life gain here and uh and whatnot there's just no way we can come back here especially because they're sitting on four cards in hand i'd really like to get you guys more gameplays to look at so i don't want to waste any more of our time on this game unfortunately because we could be here for a while but the writing is kind of on the wall to be honest so uh on to the next one unfortunately well runes are runes are still kicking apparently <laughs> it happens it's all good runes are really good man they have been for a while but uh i thought i thought we'd seen a little bit of the last of the runes but apparently not they're still kicking pretty hard um it's not bad not bad it's not bad but i don't know if i want to play the pupil out first or if we're going to use the doom scar we'll find out here as soon as our opponent drops their first land i'm sure we'll be able to tell a little bit more I thought we'd be able to tell a little bit more, but uh, apparently not. Maybe we don't go for Doomscar. I'm gonna play it out just to be on the safe side. I don't know if Doomscar is gonna be very relevant or not. Concealing Currents is pretty annoying. That's also pretty annoying. All right, looks like we're gonna have to Doomscar the board after all, which means we threw down the pupil for nothing, but I do need to get rid of the Valky because the Valky can uh, transform into one of our creatures, which is not fun for us. Uh, the discarding effects and stealing my cards is very, very frustrating and annoying, I can't lie. But, uh, again, Doomscar gonna do a very good job of taking care of that. Also, I have a very good blocker right now against Valky, so... If they wanted to do something with Valky, they're gonna have to transform it. Uh, in the meantime, though, we are gonna take three damage from the three, four concealing curtains, and we're gonna lose a card here. But, the good news is, we get to draw a card off of it, so... Nice. I'll actually take a jelly over the Wandering Emperor, I think, any day. That's not bad either. Um, yeah, I think it's fine. I think it's fine. We get a scavenging, or I'm sorry, an ooze back into the hand. It was a tough decision to pull the trigger on that. I feel like we could have maybe gotten more down the road, but I needed to play smart here, I think, and I think that was the move. Uh, this is a, annoying, but it's not the end of the world. It's a 3-3 body, so uh, we can deal with it. We can deal with it. Uh, we'll make a 3-3 body of our own with the jelly, and then the jelly will transform into, uh, not transform, but we'll get something, you know, an extra jelly back after we make this block. So the trade-off there is really, really nice. All right, we both sacrificed a creature, but I'm still left with the jelly in the meantime. Uh, we are gonna take a hit here though, pretty annoying. Yeah, their deck is annoying, but not the end of the world. Just a bit annoying. Um, I think I'm gonna go with the ooze here. The ooze is such a great tool to really close out and finish games. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just pass the turn here. No attacks with the 2-2. Two, two. I, I don't plan on blocking either, so maybe the, maybe we should have attacked, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. All right, well, they do that for two. We do lose the, uh, the ooze, but we do get the jelly back. The jelly is going to be very, very relentless, I'm telling you guys. Um, it's going to be relentless. All right, another land is good. We're going to drop it for green, and we... Not only get the Grok Maw, but we also get the Luminarch, which is going to put a 1-1 counter on the Jelly. Now, if they want to uh, blow up the board again or kill some stuff, we're not only going to get Grok Maw back as a 3-3, but um, we're also going to get the Jelly back. This is just this is just exactly what I needed for the deck. I needed it to do exactly what it's doing right now, which is to fluster uh, the opponent and, uh, you know, make them waste constant removal tools uh, to then just continuously get our stuff back all right so they're gonna attack in here which is a pretty interesting choice with us having a grok mile here it's kind of odd um all right another luminarch is fun and another grok mile is also fun and we're gonna go with you and you now, the question becomes, do we want to get aggressive? That's the question. And I don't think we can just yet. Um, I think we got to kind of sit on it and wait a little bit. Turgrid is, in fact, a very big creature. So a little bit tricky for us here. Uh, Warlock class, drawing them a card is a little scary, too, because they get to look at the top three and choose a card, which gives them quite the selection piece. 
Uh, and they threw away what? They threw away a land and a warlock class. So a good chance it's not that great of a card. That's huge. I'm really happy they attacked into us here. That's that's really huge. Is this a burn spell? That would be a little odd for this to be a burn spell, but it's possible. And if it is, I could be pretty upset. All right, cool. No burn spell. We get back another 4-4 four, four Grokma. We are going to take another life total hit from the... Uh... Okay, that's fine. Ooh, baby. That's pretty clutch. That's pretty clutch. And... Uh... Oh, we don't get a very good pull here. We can't choose the jelly because the jelly, unfortunately, is not going to work for us. But... Um... Agadium's Awakening doesn't work either. These are both X. Oh, wow. A little bit lame. A little bit lame. Can't lie. Uh, but we can now not worry too much about where these 1-1 counters go. We're going to spread out the uh, spread out the love here. Are we worried about haste? Not really. Not really. If they have a haste creature here and they get us, they get us. But um, I've got to try. I've got to try. They have something because they did take uh, a card with the warlock class and it had to have been better than a land all right it's a uh, meat hook massacre which is fine because they're going to gain a lot of life but they're not going to deal a lot of damage i should have anticipated that though and probably stacked all of my one one counters onto one particular creature instead uh four five oops yeah that's on me i, I honestly could have done a lot better job of uh stacking those 1-1 one -one counters on one particular creature to play around the Meat Hook Massacre. But, um, it is what it is. This is really scary, though. I can't lie. Very, very scary. Because if they kill my creatures and even deal a little bit of damage, they're going to do double the amount of damage. Alright, that's fine. They're going to have to spend mana to find a card, and that card's going to have to be at least 4 mana or less. Um, but it could still be a very good card and if it if it deals damage this deals double the damage so Let's go, okay, whoo that was a scary one. I can't lie. I can't lie. I made a big error there Like I said, uh Previously where I did not stack my one particular creature with all the one counters and I decided to spread them out That was a big mistake. I should have really anticipated the uh, the meat hook coming down But all in all it worked out that will conclude today's gameplay portion of the video. I just want to say uh, before we break this thing down, if you guys made it this far into the video, huge shout out and thank you to you guys. I do appreciate it so very much that you stuck around this long into the video. It helps a lot with the YouTube algorithm. So shout out to you guys um, and I appreciate you very much for that. Uh, with that being said, uh, let's talk about the list and how we kind of put it together. So um, we kick things off with Grokma, the card I really wanted to focus on. The first card that I, I put into the deck and we started to build around always had a fascination with this card i thought it was really really cool the moment i saw it the fact that it can just keep duplicating itself is a mechanic that i really enjoy and thought was really fun so uh this is how we started building the deck and from there i found myself uh you know looking at ochre jelly which is going to basically do the exact same thing but almost in a better way because this thing not only comes back once but it comes back twice and three times and it can keep going infinitely and it's very very hard to deal with uh, which is really really nice but we do have to keep these one one counters you know growing onto our creatures so we needed things that could continuously every turn you know put those 1-1 counters on our creatures so that's where we started and we knew how to build the deck from there so we started things out with luminarch um, aspirant which is really or aspirant however you want to say it uh which obviously is the best card you can have in a deck like this um and then reef ooze was a fantastic uh find for the deck because you guys saw how good this can be when you attack in and you're getting aggressive this thing can scale all your creatures up with 1-1 counters which is way better than just one counter at a time um depending on what your battlefield looks like and of course i had to add fight rigging because you know it does the same thing and it also gets us an extra card which is really really ridiculous especially if it can pull us a vorinclex um early into the game and then i i wanted to kick things off with the star pupil because it, it also plays really well into the deck by passing its one one counter off to another creature is very helpful um and it you know it plays into the game plan uh the way we want it to and it's a nice little one drop that helps us keep pace with uh you know certain aggro decks now we added in wandering emperor as well because it gives us one one counters uh, but it's also a really nice flexible card that just adds a, a little spice of removal as well um, which is nice and a, a few extra bodies uh, we already know about vornclex and how powerful that can be but i chose for my removal spells to be the inscription of abundance because it makes a lot of sense with the one one counters 
but also it adds a lot of flavor with the fighting and uh, the life gain helps a lot. And then, uh, of course, we added Doom Scar into the deck. This actually came into the deck a little bit later into the the build. I I didn't I don't necessarily like putting sweepers in decks that I'm trying to run creatures out, but it made a lot of sense here because things like Rock Maw and Orca Jelly, uh, they they respawn essentially when we Doom Scar. And uh, if our opponent's getting the best of us as far as the battlefield goes, and they're getting a little bit more wide than us, it's okay to sweep the board up if you've got a Rock Maw and Orca Jelly on the field because you're gonna be the one left with creatures um, after you sweep the board up. Your opponent's not so i thought it worked pretty well here but um ultimately man that's how the deck works that's how i kind of put it together i hope you guys uh enjoyed today's video uh if you guys have any ideas on how to make the deck any better yourselves by all means leave it down below in the comments below and uh, i'd love to hear your thoughts on the deck but um, i hope you have some fun with this one and uh yeah man it's uh it was a good time i hope you enjoyed today's video and before I get out of here, as always, huge shout out goes to the Marty Mob. If you guys don't know, the Marty Mob is the membership program here on the channel. And I got to give them a huge shout out and thank you for everything they do because it helps so much with their memberships, growing the channel and keeping it afloat. So keeping the lights on, as you would say. So thank you so much for everything. Every little bit helps. So I appreciate each and every single one of you. And uh, with that being said, guys, we're going to end today's video. Don't forget to stop by the live stream tonight at 6 p.m. MST. And uh, I hope to see you guys there. It will be the last day of the month. So, or not the last day of the month, but the uh, the last Wednesday of the month. So we got to get our, our mythic numbers grinding. So uh, come around for that. Hopefully we can get something going, but uh, we'll see you guys on tomorrow's video for the next one. Yeah. Till next time. Peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit him three times like a hat trick. Yeah. The name is says you know Patrick. Yeah, yeah. If you play him, then it's tragic. Hit him with the mythic. Yeah, that's magic. Yeah. Ooh. MTG, that's what you'll see if you like and subscribe. Where's the upload, man? Uh, man, all of the time. Coming with the best extra to the meta. This ain't cheap, yeah.